Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg Birch, and I'm the founder and president of Fight for Freedom. You all know me and my voice by now, as we are 15, I told 15 episodes in. Tonight's episode is Why the Blue Matter. Now let's start off with a new song, because I've been playing endless of the same thing. Simply. episode is again titled Why the Blue Matter. <clears throat> of course many people have differences of opinion as far as the police are concerned. Lately there's been a lot of attacks based on what they're going through. And I've seen that maybe, God, if, I would be surprised if it's even 10 officers that have done things that haven't been quite tasteful. And I want to say tonight that you're letting 10 people, if you let that affect you, affect millions. And I think that's kind of wrong. As I've stated before, the American flag has multiple meanings. Uh, 
I'm a little bit new age in some of my meanings, and I also rethink things. I don't necessarily always go back to 1776 when I see the United States flag or Betsy Ross. I typically think that there are three colors that represent three things that are most important in our nation in my eyes, because we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. That being said, again, as I will reiterate for you how I feel the American flag stands. One, <coughs> the red is clearly for those who have fallen, those who have spilled blood, those who have lost something, serving our nation. That is the red. The white is, again, our children <coughs> and the innocent, which is pretty much only our children. Also, the blue is the thin line that protects you and us when those who serve are crossed fighting other battles in other nations or other areas that are DMZ, de designated military zones, fighting for your freedom that you have been provided when they signed a blank check for what you have. Do not take this for granted. Change your ways. Do not just say thank you for your service anymore. Please stop by and talk to them. Ask them how you can help their life. Because, again, they are worth knowing. These folks are amazing. They have lived and died for everything you have. Two personal close friends of mine by the name of Krista and Deanna are both serving this nation. One has already served as a military police officer, and another one is still currently serving as a police officer. My hat's off to you. Krista and Deanna. I will get more on the subject of them in a little bit more detail in the future here later on in this episode. Back to the subject is, while these people are fighting that have served and assigned a blank check to cross wherever they may be, there is only one line of defense in this nation besides the National Guard. That line of defense is our police. They protect you from criminals and people willing to harm you for any reason whatsoever. They also protect those veterans' families that are serving and keep them safe at home. This is a dual-fold job, ladies and gentlemen. Understand that they are locked at the hips as a team. You cannot be a police officer as well and dislike veterans, nor can you usually be a veteran and dislike police as a general rule. Yes, I understand that not all police are created equal. Yes, I understand that there are bad people in every crime, okay? There are bad civilians, there are bad people who serve, there are bad police officers, there are bad people, period, in this world. But you cannot let the one person in that classroom spank the other 30, or get the other 30 spanked. That's my point. So you need to understand where my angle is from tonight. I'd like to tell you a little bit more, but tonight I wrote something. <clears throat> And it's not exactly, <coughs> shall I say, dead on point. I wrote it. It kind of changed in a little bit during the format of it. And I don't always write. I just go with the flow. So why does the blue matter? Put simply, those whom are police are a first line of defense against criminals and the corrupt insider nation of the free. They are also our last line of defense should our military ever, ever fail to protect us. What if our military did fail? They are the last line to shield us from the evil outside our walls of freedom. Day in and day out, the brave and the brilliant men and women, just like those in our military, serve our nation, but also serve our local communities. Understand that these people are intertwined one-on-one -on -one with those in their local area. It's pretty friggin' cool when you pull up to a gas station in my life and you hear Birch. And you start looking around thinking, you know, uh, who the frick is calling me, honestly? And then you see a police officer calling your name. I've had instances where I've been surrounded by enough police that you have what I call gawkers. I'm probably the only civilian you will see surrounded by five or six police cars that isn't in handcuffs because I believe in them, because I love them, and because that's how I am. All right, so there are good and bad examples across the globe of those who serve 
or those who are police. But far greater is the number of good than bad. Please understand that, again, one cannot outdo 30. Yet we as civilians choose to throw up our hands against an angst over the 10 or 20 officers who may have done wrong and then mistreat the other millions of police for what the few have done. This cannot continue. To quote Commander Spock, played by Leonard Nimoy, we must realize that the needs of the many outweigh the few and the one. Often we hear, if you're a friend with that group or individual, you can't join us. Why is that necessary? The only time that this is ever needed is when tyranny must seize the opportunity to control a nation and destroy the very fabric of its heritage. <clears throat> Understand if I stutter or screw up because I'm reading my own writing, which is not always easy to read when I'm in a hurry. Once the task of destruction is complete, there is no return. We must realize as a nation that the only acceptable destruction is the complete and utter destruction of hate amongst Americans. That means it does not matter your gender, your creed, your religion, or your race. I am very clear about this. When people ask me what I stand for, or what the difference is between me and someone, for example, who is African American, I say simply this. My blood is O positive. Can I not save him or her just as well as him or her can save me? So what is the difference between me and them? There is none. So choose to see the insides of each person as the same. In the 1860s, our nation built what is now known as the Transcontinental Railroad. The track section where it was laid down at the final junction and promontory summit in Utah a golden spike was driven to indicate the network of rails was complete. It was a job well done in the golden age of American growth and prosperity as far as technology was concerned. But we still had much to learn about humanity and the epic cost of hatred and slavery. By the time it was finished, the railroad was complete after the Civil War, four years later. It had ended with 1.0 million deaths as a result of hatred and indecency in our country. This includes hatred of our police and of our veterans and those who are different. It was the first great leap in equality and it was made after slavery was abolished. We are now 15 score and three years past the Emancipation Proclamation. We can now look back and realize just how far we have come from the Civil War era, but we have yet so much farther to go, for we have not yet descended upon decency. We still have walls of hate. If there was one thing I would say to the President of the United States tonight, it would be, President Trump, tear down these walls of hate and indecency between Americans. Show them that the greater good is far greater than the guardians of evil. We can win. We can make change. 306 million Americans cannot possibly be all evil. I believe that less than one hundredth of America is. We also must open our doors to our allies, and I do not mean give them everything free. I do not mean be indecent. I also do not mean throw everything away or give out free money or any of that like we've done to Syria. I mean, come into our nation, join our culture, we will join yours, and we will help each other as brothers and sisters. And that is something that you will find in the Bible. You will find that being decent gets you far greater than being evil. And now for a little more music. <laughs> You hit your skeleton